All right, what's up, familia? Welcome inside the pad. Hope you guys are doing good. Keep it in between the lines. Got your load secure. Okay, so judging. It's one thing that I hear a lot of, and I think it might be a little misunderstood, but I'm not sure. Maybe I'm getting it wrong. So let me go ahead and bring in a really good friend of mine from House of Rest Church 1, Mr. Pastor David. Hey, how's it going? It's going good. How you doing, Pastor? Doing pretty good. Pretty good. Okay. All right. So uh, you excited to get into this topic? Yeah. Yeah. You like my Halloween costume? I'm dressed as a pastor of House of Rest. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. And you're, you're, uh, you're fitting. You look just like them too. <laughs> you know what's um, funny is, is my brim hat's at the church, but I was going to come on dressed like you. <laughs> I was in it because I have my clear prescription glasses too. Okay. I was going to put my brim hat on and, uh, didn't work that, so the that thought that counts been, that, that you know what it, it counts right here i, I could feel <laughs> it i could picture it already pastor. so we're on our way yeah so pastor um you know i, I i've been attending church for for a long time and it really doesn't matter what church i go to i i pretty much hear the same spill for the most part i don't want to stay completely across the board but for the most part I hear the same spill, and that is, we shouldn't judge. You're not mm -hmm. to judge. You know, uh, don't judge. And I'm just kind of like, okay, all right, cool. And, you know, I hear many people that are Christians say the yeah. same thing, don't judge. However, I kind of hear them say that when um, it suits them, yeah. right? Because when I really pay attention, I'm like, well, wait a second. And you you were judging, you know, but uh, but then, you know, now you're saying don't judge and you shouldn't judge. And that it says in the Bible not to judge. We are not to judge. And one thing is, Pastor, that judging basically just means, you know, forming an opinion. Um, we all judge. Everybody judges. Um, at least to the best of my knowledge, everybody judges. How do you go through life without making a judgment call? If that person, I don't want, I, I'm judging that person on what they're doing, their character, how they're carrying themselves and saying, okay, this person is actually good for my life or this person is not good for my life. That's a judgment call that I'm making yeah. to say, you know, I don't want this person in my life. Or I do want this person in my life. Judging doesn't necessarily have to be bad. It can be good as well. Pastor, I judge you. You're a strong man of character. You walk what you preach. And I'm like, you know what? This is a stand-up individual. That's a judgment that I made on you to say, okay, you know what? This is a stand-up individual. Pastor, just in day-to-day -day basis, before we get into the whole biblical definition of judging, yeah. But just in every day outside of church, isn't it just kind of human nature that everybody judges? Yeah. I mean, it's weird how sometimes the word judgment, people automatically go to the negative. Mm -hmm. um, okay. You, you enjoy boxing. Isn't there right. judges? <laughs> right. You right. know, yes. there's yes. judges, you know? So um, it's weird how a lot of times we take a word and we automatically think it's negative. You know, like um, the word stronghold, people are like, oh, that's a demonic stronghold. But stronghold is actually not a demonic word. A demonic stronghold is a strong word, but there's also a godly stronghold, you know, a, a, basically a fort, a, a place of refuge, you know, so people, all, it's weird how people make words negative. But yeah, I think that, um, first of all, Tupac made it famous. Only God can judge me, <laughs> you okay. know, but. Okay, I remember that. Yeah. yeah. And uh, all of a sudden, everybody got that tattooed on them and everything. But um, I think that to get to the core of what you're talking about, it's defining what that means. Because I think one form of judgment is what you said. It's, it's, it's forming an opinion. It's having discernment. It's being smart. You know, um, we judge. Okay, is this healthy to eat? Is this not healthy? We judge is, you know, should I ride my bike on this street that that's full of traffic and trucks or do i go on the side you know what i mean so those are different kinds of judgments than i think uh, i think we put too much of a, a 
make, we make it too much of a, of a generalized statement. Just to start off, I think we got to say there's different levels and there's different types of judgments. Wouldn't you think? Okay. Yes. And I definitely want to get into that. Yeah. Um, but I, I would say this, if it's like when I say that I hear people say things like, you know what? I don't judge anybody, you know, yeah. I don't, I don't judge yeah. anyone. And it's like, no, 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 we, we, we all do. Okay? We all do whether right or wrong, but, but we all do. You're telling me you have no opinion about anybody when you, when you see, when you see a man who is stepping out on his wife, mm -hmm. you have zero opinion about that person. None yeah. at all whatsoever. You don't have a judgment and saying like, you know what? That's probably a guy not to be trusted. Yeah. You have zero opinion there. There's to you, him and the very, very loving husband to you. They're exactly the same. There's no difference there for you. Like, no, there, there is judgment. You know, you yeah. do judge one another now casting a stone that's in judgment. Now mm -hmm. that is different. Now you're over there saying like, well, now, this person deserves to die. You know, we need to take this person's life. Now, you know, we're getting out of bounds here, but, but as far as judgment goes, yeah, we, we definitely judge. Um, yeah. I, listen, I shout outs to all the ladies. I know I got ladies that watch the channel and I, I hear them say that a lot. Like, you know, I, I don't judge. I'm not one to judge, but my goodness, women judge women pretty often and, 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 <laughs> and pretty harsh, you know? So, yeah. um, but pastor i i as you know uh i've been reading the bible for quite a few years now and mm -hmm. i'm almost done with it depending on when people are watching this i'm in the book of revelations wow. there's two there's two things that i really kept an eye on. by the way by the way just disclaimer because i'm reading the bible from front to end does not mean i know anything about the bible <laughs> i i cannot tell you you know a quarter of a percentage of what's in the bible but one thing one thing pastor or two things i should say that i really looked out for is um women in church and past and i'm and judging yeah um because i see that in society a lot today um so Whenever I hear pastors or people just say, it says in the Bible, you shouldn't judge. That's not what I found, Pastor. And I mm. want you to set me straight if, uh, if need be, because that's, that's, not, that's not what I found in the Bible. I have a couple yeah. of verses here written down, and I have my uh, Bible here is a New King James Version, but I also saw it on the ES. Um, Oh my goodness! What's the other version? ESV. ESV. Yeah, ESV, ESV version as well. It was it was the same thing, just yeah. worded a little bit different. Um, mm -hmm. But I that I that's not what I saw, Pastor. I did not. See, yeah. I did not see where it says, "Do not judge, either at all costs, or do not judge at all." Actually, yeah. I see where it says, you know, do judge, but there's a way to judge. Um, yeah. Well, Pastor, me, what what? What's your thoughts? Well, when now that you're we're bringing the word judge into a biblical understanding, here's where people take it out of context. Because, for instance, um, if you or I do a crime, there's only one person that can send us to prison: mm -hmm. the judge. Right. Correct. So that judge is now passing judgment for your future freedom. So when the Bible says that we shouldn't judge, it's not talking about how somebody's dressed, how somebody's looks, how somebody acts, or somebody. It, it, God's like, oh, you know, that those are just that's nothing to me. Mm -hmm. When we pass judgment, is to say that somebody is going to heaven or hell. It's an eternal decision that there's only one judge. We're all going to stand before God. You or I cannot judge anyone into heaven. We can't judge anyone into hell. You know, so that's why the Bible says only God can judge because he's the only one that has the right. He's the only one that has the authority. You know, so 
I think, unfortunately, people have taken that out of context and and used it um, frivolously, you know, and, and using it wrong. And um, so, number one, in the biblical context, it's there's only one judge. So I'm not sure if that's where 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 you're going, you know, with with the with the question. But number one, biblical judgment is talking about heaven or hell. For for it's wrong for me to say to someone that they're they're going to hell. Or mm-hmm. if, for instance, um, now I can make a I can make a an educated judgment if I know that somebody, let's say somebody's died. I mean, that's horrible to say by oh man, this person's burning in hell right now, you mm-hmm. know, uh, because we don't we don't know their last seconds of their life or whatever. You know, but a lot of times people have lived their lives in a certain way where you're just like, man, I, I doubt this person made it. You know what I mean? Uh, that's just making an educated guess, you know, but to say that this person gone is went, is went straight to hell on a rocket, you know, that is something completely different. We don't have that right to say that, you know, um, and I think another thing, too, is that people use it is that. Unfortunately, uh, me being a Christian for 19 years now, I have met some people that have been Christians so long that they almost maybe unconsciously put themselves higher than other people, like kind of holier than thou. And then they look down and judge those that came out of the very same thing they came out of, you know, uh, for uh, somebody that was free from alcohol. And then they look at Somebody like, look at a bunch of drunks or somebody that came out of heroin addiction and, and they just like, oh, look at those heroin, you know what I mean? Or, or whatever. But now it's a rightful judgment if you're just like, you know what, this person's a heroin addict. I'm not going to I'm not going to um, let them sleep in my house because they're going to rob me blind. Like that's a right judgment. That's using discernment. That's using a correct judgment. You know, mm-hmm. I, I think we can judge. I think as a pastor, I got to judge characters. You know, because if somebody comes and all of a sudden they want to they want to be with the kids and they got some crazy stuff in their past, I'm going to make a rightful judgment and say, you can't be around the kids. Right. You know, you 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 the church is is for all sinners. The church is whatever. But if somebody's going to come and cause problems or somebody's going to come and bring issues, if somebody's going to come, then I'm going to make a rightful judgment. Because I have to protect the people in the church, the the the, the women, the children, you know. Um, and can you imagine if that person says, "Oh, look at that pastor; he's judging me." Right. No, exactly. no man, I'm yeah. just being smart. I'm making an educated uh, uh, decision here. And, and and that does happen. It does yeah. happen. Where you know, I I hear it. I hear it. You know, you were touching on people in church who, um, you know, look down on others, right? Uh, even if it's something that they came from. I, I hear it vice versa as well. I hear people like, no, I don't go to church. They're too judgmental. They think they're all good. They think they're better. Hear? They I think can... they're this. They think they're that, right? Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I see them both sides. But one, one, um, one verse that I want to get into before uh, I touch on the, uh, the judgment verses is um hebrews chapter 4 verse 15 um if you want to turn there pastor yeah i'll find it right now hebrews 4 15 yes hebrews 4 15 okay i never thought i'd be calling out verses man (laughs) (laughs) um uh, yeah for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses but was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin, mm-hmm. right? Now, does that really have to do so much with judging? No, but what it no. does have to do is with the temptation. And when we say like, hey, you know what? You shouldn't judge. There was only one that was perfect and everything. Well, yeah, yeah. there's that scripture right there that says, you know, he was tempted in all mm-hmm. ways that humans are, that we are. And he went without sin, right? Yeah. But now this is where I want to get into the um, in, into the uh, the judgment. I'll go with Matthew seven, uh, verse one, because can that... I say something about that? Can I say something about that verse real quick, though? Please, please. Maybe it's a little out of context, but I want to 
So for people that read that, basically what that verse is saying is that Jesus was tempted in every way. Mm-hmm. And the reason I say that is because a lot of people watching this think that just because they're tempted by something, oh, I sinned already, so I might as well do it. Mm-hmm. Temptation itself is not a sin. It's when you act upon it. It's when you entertain that thought. You know, so, so I know this is weird to think of, but if Jesus was tempted in every way, that means he was tempted sexually too, mm-hmm. because he was a man. And people don't like to hear that, but that's the truth of it. You know, and the truth of it, it says that even though he was tempted in every way, he was without sin. So that means that temptation itself is not a sin. It's when you entertain it and then you follow it through. Because Jesus was sinless. He had no sin, but yet he was tempted in every way. Right. So anyways, (laughs) what were you saying, Matthew? Uh, Matthew chapter 7. Okay. We'll go with uh, verse one, because this is where people and, and this is why I I encourage anybody and everybody to read the Bible on your own. I think it's very, mm-hmm. very important to read the Bible on your own, because if not, I would have just gone off and just said, like, yeah, you know, you're, you're not to judge. It says in the Bible. How do I know that? Because everybody's told me that that's what it says. So, um, chapter seven, verse one says, judge not that you be not judged. Verse two, for that, I'm sorry, for with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Now, this is the interesting part. Usually people stop at either verse one or verse two, but verse Mm -hmm. two is usually the longest I've ever heard anybody go. I've never heard anybody continue to talk about it because it continues to talk about judging. So we go to verse three. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? Verse four. Or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye and look, a plank is in your own eye. Verse five. Here we go. Hypocrite. First, remove the plank from your own eye and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Pastor. Yeah. That right there. I've never heard anybody preach that. Um, and if and you know what, if anybody has preached that to me, it just went over my head. I'm sorry. Yeah. But I, I've only heard verse one where it says, judge not uh, that you be not judged. Usually that's all I hear. And it's like, you see, it says it right there in the Bible. But if you continue, it tells you right here how to judge. Remove the plank from your own eye mm-hmm. before you know, you point out the plank in your brother's eye. So, you know, if you're over there and you're a mess, but you're pointing at somebody else for being in the same mess that you are, it's like, well, remove the the, the speck in your own eye. And I have seen that in, um, I probably should have got the other version. I, I like the other, you know, remove the log from your own eye and judge righteously. Right. So it's not to be judging with malice. It's not to be pointing at somebody and and pointing down at them and, you know, destroying them. But it's to uplift. And I have uh, other verses that talk about that. But what's your thoughts on that, Pastor? Well, this is something that nobody says is that, yeah, we all know that if you're doing, let's say you're judging somebody for doing something, but you're you're doing it worse. That's basically Mm -hmm. what Jesus is talking about. Like you're 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 judging this person on a speck, but you got a big old log sticking out of your own eye. But what happens though? Here's the thing that nobody talks about. What happens when you do take that log out? What happens when you do take those things out? So in other words, Jesus is saying, listen, before you go around trying to correct people, why don't you correct it in you first? But once you correct it in yourself, because if you if you now that doesn't mean to go around judging people, but mm-hmm. it puts you in a position now where you can speak to people. And say, man, you know what? That same thing that you're doing, man, I was there too. Matter of fact, I was worse, you know? Um, but again, it, it 
it doesn't people don't talk about it if what about when you do take the log out of your eye are you are you rightful to judge now again that's that it's not that judge of sending somebody to hell it's that judging of being able to to talk and speak life into somebody notice on the on the bottom it says hypocrite you know what a hypocrite is in a this was written in greek and in the greek a hypocrite was actually an actor like the smile now and cry later it was the same actor that wore a sad mask and then he'd go and put a happy mask it was the same person so a matter of fact a hypocrite was actually a compliment back then you know, if you mm-hmm. would see somebody act and be like, man, you're a really good hypocrite. In other words, you can put different face masks on and act like something different that you're not. So it was it was a it was actually um, something good. If you were an actor, if you did a play, you could do a one man play, wear different masks, but it's all you. But what he's saying here, he says, you hypocrite. Don't be an actor. Don't mm-hmm. be fake. Don't mm-hmm. put a fake mask on and then go try to call everybody else's um, sins out. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And anyways, that's interesting that it says uh, you hypocrite. You need to take that log out of your own eye, and then you'll be able to see clearly. Um, it says right. to take the speck out of, to take the speck out of your brother's eye. So once again, okay. he's not saying judging them. He's saying right. take the log out. So now you are living in a way where now you can help your fellow brother take the speck out of his eye. Mm-hmm. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So that's yeah. why uh, I'm saying you judge righteously you don't do yeah. it out of malice and it says in the verse you do it to that, help them exactly it says in the verse before that mm-hmm. or how can you remove the speck out of your brother's eye removing it meaning you're there to help you're not there to mm-hmm. beat up you're not there to you know uh point down at or anything like that you are there to help you see a speck but remove that from your own eye first and yeah. then you could help your uh your brother yeah. out but yeah, you know, um, that that's something as I continued reading that, I'm like, whoa, you know, yeah. uh, I I see it a little bit different now because everybody yeah. just gave me the verse, verse one or at the very most verse two. But for the most part, verse one, where it's like, no, no, you you are not uh, you are not to judge, which leads me to um, John 530. Sorry, Pastor, I don't know if I. I should have sent you some of these uh, no, verses. I, I already found it. Okay. <laughs> okay, so um, John chapter okay. 5, verse 30 says, I can of myself do nothing as I hear. I judge, mm-hmm. and my judgment is righteous because I do not seek my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me righteous i think that kind of gets a little uh thrown off when mm-hmm. it comes to judgment it's like hey 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 you shouldn't judge hey hey you're, it's not right to judge hey this when you know judgment is always bad well are you judging are you judging righteously yeah right because you're judging how can you see if somebody is in need how can you see if somebody needs some help how can without making that judgment but again the righteous judgment not the judgment yeah. of and again pastor if i'm wrong uh you know correct me but not judgment of wow look at that person you know yeah. man what a piece of garbage or whatever but no 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 a righteous judgment like you know what i'll yeah. pray for that person I, I, I can't help that person. Their mind is way too far gone. They're not trying to hear it. And they probably even mean, mean bad for me. You know, yeah. they probably even wish me bad. And I there's nothing I can do at the moment. But God bless that person. And uh, But I can see they're in a bad place. That's a judgment. But it's a righteous one from the Father who sent what what's your yeah. thought on that pastor um the word righteous uh it gets lost sometimes when people aren't used to reading the bible or so i want to give a good clear definition of what it means by righteous or to be in uh uh righteous means to be in right standing with god that's what that means you know um same thing like when um uh i have a um in my wallet i carry a, a clergy card from grace international and every year 
um, they review it, they review me, and then if if I'm in right standing with Grace International, they issue me a new one to show that I'm in right standing with Grace International. So righteousness means to be in right standing with God, you know? So just in case um, somebody doesn't understand what that means, um, on my, I, I have an ESV here. I'm not sure. You're, are you reading out of a New King James? Yes. Okay. It doesn't even say the word righteous, but it says the same thing. It says, I can do nothing on my own. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, um, because I seek not my own will, but the will of him who sent me. You know, so again, um, his judgment is is perfect. You know, even an earthly judge can only go by the evidence that's given to him. You know, in, in a court of law, for instance, he has to judge how many times have you seen people that have done horrendous things, but they get off uh, because the, there was no evidence? So the judge can only judge on what was presented to him. But God is a righteous judge. He's 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 just, meaning he knows everything. There's nothing you can hide from him. You know, so by default, then that sets us in a place where we can't see the, the, the way God sees things. You know, um, I, I'll give you this story. I'll, I'll make it quick. Uh, it's just a it's not a real life story but it's just like a like a parable for instance this guy's on a bus and um he had a kid and the kid was uh just being extremely bad bratty crying messing with everybody touching everybody's stuff and um and the father was just looking out the window not even paying attention not disciplining his son not doing anything and um everybody in the bus was bothered and they were angry at the father um, they weren't angry at the kid because the kid's just a kid, but they were angry at the father for not disciplining, not checking his son, making him sit down, making him be quiet. And finally, they reached um, a bus stop. And uh, when the man got off real quick to get his son a, a corn dog, everybody approached the bus driver, says, if you let that man back in, we're not going on this bus. You got to tell this man to calm his son down. And the bus driver said, you know what? I apologize. I'm sorry. He's a, uh, but uh, I'll tell him. He was. It's just that the the man. Um, he just came from his wife's funeral, and um, the little boy is acting up because he doesn't have his mom anymore. And the man is the man's broken, and that's why he's probably in a daze right now. The moment everybody heard that story, they got back in the bus. The man got back in, just kept staring out the window. The kid was still acting bad. But everybody had compassion. So they started to care for this child that was hurting from his mom missing. And they started caring for the man because the man they didn't realize was just looking out the window weeping the whole time. So the attitude didn't change. The the situation didn't change. But the perspective changed. Right. A lot of times we judge people because we don't know what they're walking through what they've walked through in the past, what they are going through. And because of that, sometimes our judgment is not just, but God that knows all things, he, his judgment is pure, you know? So, you know, sometimes it was easier before when I wasn't a Christian because I could just say, oh man, that dude's racist. Oh man, this is that. Oh man, you know, and, and <laughs> more and more, I'm a Christian, the more I read the word, the more I try to have the mind of Christ. Um, I can't help but have a 360 vision of things. Mm -hmm. You know, you got these YouTubers right now, for instance, and I've seen them, they argue back and forth. They'll, they'll take shots at each other. You know, a lot of the people we know, you know, mm -hmm. they'll take shots at each other. And, and the whole time I'm just like, man, you know, and, and I think like, man, you know what, what this guy did, that was a jerk move, man. <laughs> I, I think right. that. Right. But I'm just like, what's causing him? I'm like, Lord, what's causing him to act out like that? And then sometimes I don't like it because I just want to make a judgment call, mm -hmm. you know? And the, then it's like the Lord is like, you don't understand because you don't understand what he went through. I understand why he's like that because I'm a just judge, you know, and back and forth. And, and because of that, I just, I keep to myself and sometimes one YouTuber would do something to another that I think was not fair, you know, mm -hmm. or, or not right. And I'm just like, I'm just like, Lord, you, you be the judge of this. Cause you know, I don't know if that makes sense, man, but no, it, it, it does. 
Uh, definitely does. Um, uh, however, uh, parents, please keep your kids in check. <laughs> 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 yeah. No, but I, I completely understand the story. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, it's just I, I've been around um, friends and family that they just don't have their kids in check and just let them yeah. roam wild. And it's like yeah. son of a gun. Come yeah. on, man. You know? I, I, I grew. My mom got saved when I was five. Okay. And I don't remember acting up in church at mm. five years old. I would sit there, mm. you know, and. I see kids 9, 10, 11, 12 in church acting like little babies. Mm. So I get what you're saying. You know what I mean? Like, hey, man, <laughs> what's going on, man? Keep your kids in check. Like, seriously? Yeah, like, if, not, is, I'm gonna, if not, I'm going to judge. <laughs> there is no way your kid has to go pee five times in a 90-minute service. That's impossible. If, yeah. if that's the case, bring them up for healing or take them to the doctor. Like seriously. They have, yeah. They have some medical <laughs> issue. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. Uh, pastor, I want to uh, get to this other verse and that yeah. is uh, John seven twenty four. John chapter seven, verse okay. 24. I see it. Okay. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, and John chapter 7, verse 24 says, Do not judge according to appearance, mm. but judge with the righteous judgment. That's good. See, yeah, see, th this, th this is why that word righteous is huge. Yeah. And why I never hear anybody talk about this. They just say you shouldn't judge. As I'm reading the Bible, I'm like, that's not what I see. Um, yeah. It's telling you how to judge and to judge righteously. Yeah. It's not telling you not to judge. Like I said, judging, it's if, if you had no judgment whatsoever, it, you would see everybody, it, I mean, exactly the same. Anybody can yeah. do whatever foul behavior and you would have no judgment on it whatsoever you would have no thought you would have nothing like i said casting a stone is one thing but just you haven't and by the way for everybody and anybody yeah. watching just because you don't say it with your mouth if it's in your mind you know it is you have yeah. made a judgment call on a person right whether you want them in your life you don't want them in your life or you just think it's wrong what they did or it's right what they did yeah. You know, but what it says there, righteous. And that's why I, I like what you're talking about earlier, Pastor. It's like, yeah. okay, let's define righteous. It's not you being angry and um, completely out of bounds with rage and anger uh, judging somebody. That's that's not what it is. Can, can you talk a little bit about that, Pastor? Well, about what you're saying about this verse here, because this about verse, verse. Is, yes. it says, do not judge by appearances. Um, I'm pretty sure, bro, that you've been judged by your appearance. Um, I have, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So uh, this, this hits home for me. Um, at the same time, you know, it, it uh, one time I was in Rite Aid, uh, the pharmacy, you guys have Rite Aids down there? Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, Sharon was waiting, for, you know, sometimes they tell you, oh, wait 15 minutes for your medication or whatever. She had to get mm -hmm. medicine or something. So she was, she decided to wait there and sit there. And I would just went walking around. I didn't want to sit for 15 minutes. So I'm like, Oh, let me check out what's, you know, you, you find little knickknacks or something on sale. Mm -hmm. And, um, the manager starts following me around, you know, I'm not a young teenager. I'm not a young kid. I'm not all choloed out or nothing. I'm just regular man, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, he starts following me every hour I go, you know, and I finally, I got tired of it. So I went and sat down next to Sharon <laughs> You know, and she's like, what happened? I was like, uh, I'd rather just sit here and wait with you because this dude keeps following me. Well, she got all upset. And she, man, you know how your wife's the same way. My wife mm -hmm. wasn't wasn't having it. <laughs> and right, she went right. over there and, and said something. And I just like, man, don't say nothing. And, mm -hmm. and I remember telling Sharon, I'm like, I've gone through this my whole life. Like, this is, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to sit here and fight this battle because if that's then I'd just be fighting battles all the time, you know, but she was really bothered by it. Uh, I don't like, um, 
when when people judge me by appearance. So I, I really try my hardest. Uh, but at the same time, though, let's be smart about it. You know, at the same time, like, for instance, if I pull up to a gas station and I see gangbangers and it's one o'clock in the morning, um, I'm going to make a righteous judgment and just keep it moving. Mm -hmm. If I see them out there acting up and maybe they're, they're, they're drunk and like, why, why, you know, so I'm going to judge by their appearance. Right. Right. And keep it going. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to just keep it moving to the next gas station. Um, mm -hmm. but I don't think that's what this verse is talking about. It, it, Jesus is, is he's going back like in the old Testament, for instance, in the book of Samuel, um, the prophet Samuel said, God told him, go to find a man named Jesse, and one of his sons is going to be the next king of Israel. He, he's a man after my own heart. So the prophet goes over there and says, hey, you know, um, I need to meet your sons. And um, so Jesse was nervous because he's like, oh, man, a prophet came. Hopefully it's not for a bad reason. And um, so he brought his oldest son, big, strong. The Bible says he was very handsome and tall. And the Lord says, that ain't him. That ain't him. All these handsome sons. And then he he went through all of them. And each one, the Lord says, none of these. So he tells Jesse, he goes, do you have any more sons? And he says, well, yeah, I mean, David, but he's over there with the sheep and he stinks. And he says, take me to him. Right. And he went over there and we know the story. He anointed him. The Lord said, this is the one because his heart is after my heart. And he poured the oil and anointed him to be the next king of Israel. And, and the Lord told him, I don't judge by appearances. I judge by the heart. You know, and um, so I believe that that's where this derives from, where he says, don't judge by appearance, but judge with right judgment. You know, and I think this goes alongside with the scripture where the Bible says that that the Lord seeks the rejected to mm -hmm. confound the wise. He he chooses the weak. He will. Cho That's why I, this why I, I love this bro brother because he'll choose the ex gang member. <laughs> he'll choose the ex whatever. He'll choose the down and out, the broken, the shattered. He'll choose the prostitute. He'll choose whoever he chooses. And he will turn their whole life around. You know, um, I, I'm not I'm not dumb, man. I know that I won't get invited to some places to preach because I'm an ex-con or because right. of the way I look. I know mm -hmm. that. I don't mm -hmm. I don't I don't let that. I'm going to just I keep it moving. I'm not going to let that stop me. I know the assignment God has given to me and I'm going to do what I'm going to do. But I, I do know that. At one point, somebody's going to by bypass my channel because I don't look like like I came out of Harvard, you know, and and so they won't even bother to hear what I have to say about the Bible or a sermon or a Bible study or anything like that. You know, this is the reality of it, you know, pa Pastor, uh, not not to combat that, but doesn't that yeah. go every which different way? Isn't yeah, there yeah. somebody that went to Harvard and was not in a life of crime and maybe uh, somebody who was doesn't want to hear what they have to say? They're like, man, they, this this dude doesn't know what I've been through. So I'm yeah. just going to bypass his channel. I mean, doesn't yeah. that go? Is it, I, mean, I, see, I, I mean, I see I see judgment all over the place. I, I you know, I hear the story that you said. Right. Yeah, I, I, I get it. And at the same time, you know, I hear judgment all the time i you know with people you know with money it's like oh, oh man yeah. they don't they don't know what it's really like to work for their money you know and it's like okay well do you know the person's story maybe they do maybe they actually mm -hmm. worked hard for their money you know to to get their success and hey you know this person uh never lived a life of crime or the streets or never went to incarceration or or was never from a gang or drug issue and everything well Oh, isn't that what you want your kids to be? Yeah. So why are you like, no, I don't want to hear what this person has to say because this person doesn't know what I went through. Well, aren't you, don't you want your kids to not go through that as well? Like, yeah, I, I, I'm just saying, Pastor, I, I'm, I'm not being combative. I'm, I'm just saying. No, you're right. I, I, I only hear it one way. 